Is a computer reliable enough to use on stage? I'm gonna to try to answer that question in this video, plus share a couple tips and tricks that will keep your computer running smoothly. So on a few recent tutorials, I've had some of you comment and say, hey, could you do some content on, you know, running tracks on different hardware devices? Uh, and I've thought, well, that's interesting. Are you using hardware, use a computer? And as I've dug in and thank you guys for your time and, and taking the effort and time to respond to my questions, I've realized people's hesitation to using computers on stage all came down to one point and that's reliability. And they felt like com their computers weren't reliable enough to use on stage. And honestly, my first reaction to this was, well, that's kind of silly. Of course, computers are reliable enough to use on stage. That's what I've been using for many, many years. And everyone I know that does playback at a professional level that's traveling with people is using a computer. So of course, computers are reliable enough to use on stage. Well, then uh, a couple weeks ago, I was in Nashville for a couple shows running playback for some live TV tapings, multi-artist. Uh, this is a live set I use, you know, multiple, multiple songs. And I had some computer issues. I had some computer glitches. And, and talking with a friend of mine, I revisited that question and I said, you know what? Is a computer reliable enough to use on stage? Well, no, it's not. But it's the best option we have. Now, I know that sounds confusing, but in this video, I wanna share some tips and tricks that are gonna help you keep your computer running smoothly. But before I do that, I wanna address that question. Is the computer reliable enough to use on stage? Well, somewhat, but you've gotta follow these tips and tricks, which I'm gonna share in a moment, that will help keep your computer running smoothly. There's some basic things we can do, some basic computer hygiene that's going to help. But ultimately, I think we should approach our computers uh, as if they are unreliable. And so there's some steps we should take to prepare. In fact, there's one at the end that is the most important step. This is the only reason why these two events were successful and why no one noticed uh, when my computer completely stopped playing audio. So stay tuned for that. Um, but again, if, if it's unreliable, then, then why should we use computers on stage? Well, like I said, it's the best possible option we have. For me in particular, and I've done a couple videos walking through this, this show that I did could not be possible if I was doing this on a hardware device. Why? Well, because I needed the ability to repeat, to jump around. I needed the ability in real time to add some extra guide cues. So if you go here and you see these, these guide cues here, um, I had to look at the timeline and add guide cues in real time in rehearsal. I had to jump from specific parts of the song to other uh, parts of the song to start on specific parts in rehearsal. I had to, for instance, take this click track up here and let's see if I can find the section of the song right here, change it in, in the middle of rehearsal just on a whim because the MD felt we needed this, take this section right here and, and pull the eighth notes out and just have quarter notes happen. Now I could only do that if I was using a computer. Now the other reason why I say our computers are live on stage, well no, not really, but it's the best option we have, is no matter what you use, you have to look at it and treat it as if it's unreliable. I don't care what hardware base player you're using. Uh, I don't care, you know, I don't know what else you would use other than a computer. I know some folks use the Cymatic player. If you're using that, if you're using a computer, if you're using a, a, an iPod and you're playing back tracks from an iPod, at some point, at some time, that is going to fail. So we always have to have a backup plan. More on that in just a moment. So whether you're using a computer, a hardware playback device, whatever it is, it's going to fail and you have to be ready for that. Again, we'll talk about that more in a moment. So for me, um, if I follow the correct steps, my computer is going to be reliable, but I'm gonna make preparation for when it's not. We'll talk about that in a second, but I'm gonna follow a couple tips and tricks to get my computer ready to keep it running smoothly when I'm on stage. So let's look at tip number one. Number one is turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So uh, I think we all know how to do this, but you know, on Mac, we can go up here to the Wi-Fi and we can disable that. Uh, and even if you're connected via uh, hardwire and using ethernet, um, uh, you know, that's stable if you're on a separate kind of network. Um, but best case scenario, disable all network connectivity. If you have to connect for maybe sending MIDI or something, then uh, uh, you can use hardwired, but make sure you use a separate network if you're doing that. Don't use the network of the venue that you're in, no matter how well you think it works. I've literally done shows where uh, I thought everything was working, it was hardwired, and then people, enough people got on the network that I got booted off and kicked off. And yes, my IT friends out there are good, but, but quality of service will. Yes, I know there's ways around that, but use your own network that's not the venue's network. Uh, Bluetooth, again, disabling Bluetooth is super, super essential. You can go up here. I'm not gonna disable Bluetooth, 
Bluetooth right now, because if I did, my keyboard and mouse would no longer work. And it's not like I've accidentally done that before and had to find a way to get back to my computer. But disabled Bluetooth, I had a friend um, that people were trying to airdrop stuff to their computer during the show because of the artist's name. Let's say giant pop artist Will Doggett showed up on the computer. And so people went in to, uh, to airdrop on their phones and went, Will Doggett's computer and tried to uh, airdrop pictures, which we can only imagine what those were pictures of. Okay, next thing, disable screensaver. Now, depending on your computer, uh, depends on uh, the exact setup how to do this. In fact, I, I had to go, how in the world do I get to screensaver? I don't even remember. Depending on your OS, if you're on Mac, it's different. But at least at the time of me recording this, this version of OS, I went into desktop and screensaver. I clicked here, went to screensaver, and I made sure this is set to start after never, okay? Um, you can uh, disable hot corners. That may trigger that as well, too. I also believe potentially in like the energy settings on Mac, um, you can disable that and maybe a newer version. Uh, let's see, energy saver here. Um, yeah, there's some different stuff we can do here and we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay, so disable your screen saver. Uh, we're not gonna be environmentally friendly right now. We want our computer to suck up as much power as possible and uh, we want as much carbon emitted as possible when we're using our computers. I kid, don't get frustrated with me. Okay, number three, disable any ability or feature, like energy efficient feature, particularly the one that's gonna try to put our hard drive to sleep or again, any kind of energy power saving thing. So if I go again back into Macs, at least on my Mac, if I go into system preferences here, go to energy saver, typically there's some sort of option that says like this, put hard disk uh, to sleep when possible, okay? No, I do not want my hard uh, disk to sleep when possible. Turn display off after, this is set to never. Now, if you're on a laptop, you're gonna see two different ones, one that's plugged in, one that's on battery. Um, uh, set both of those to be that way. Uh, that works really, really well. It's gonna particularly let you know when you accidentally forgot to plug in your adapter uh, for a show and your computer suddenly dies because you left your screen brightness all the way up, all those sorts of things. But um, make sure in this setting, any sort of energy saving thing, again, now is not the time to be environmentally conscious. We want our computer to run and run at uh, 100%. Okay, next thing, PC, Mac, individual software, whatever it is, disable any and all auto updates. In fact, I did a video a couple months ago, maybe a month ago now, where I showed how to disable this in Ableton Live, uh, but let's go into Ableton Live and I'll show you this. Preferences is command comma, control comma if we're on a PC. Uh, you can go into, I believe it's li licenses and maintenance. That's hard to say. Uh, get automatic updates. You can leave it set to ask me. What I normally do is leave it set to never. Sometime I face the, the, reap the consequences of that, which is I miss updates, but leave it set to ask me. And at the bottom of your live screen, when there's an update available, say, hey, do you wanna update? Skip it. Do not update before you step on stage. That's a disaster just waiting to happen. Now, depending on if you're on a Windows PC, a Mac, whatever you're using, there's also gonna be some sort of auto update feature for your OS. Make sure that is disabled. So at the software level in Ableton, make sure that's disabled. At the OS level, make sure that's disabled as well too. Okay, two final things I have here, and then our third kind of very important special thing. But before I do that, I wanna ask you to consider subscribing. Every single day I post a brand new tutorial like this, showing you how to use a computer on stage without failing miserably and making a complete joke of yourself, uh, and lots of other fun things. If you like content like this, then hit the subscribe button, enable the bell icon so you see exactly when I go live. Okay, next thing we have to be aware of is we have to have plenty of space available on our computer. Now, those of you that are uh, engineers, you're the precision people, you're going, but Will, exactly how much space do I need? Well, as much as possible. But Will, give us a ballpark. As much free space as you can make available, make available. Uh, for example, uh, when I first started running tracks, at one point, I was running tracks with five gigs of space left on my computer. Not cool, not cool. That did not work well. That was not a great idea. Um, so you say, well, Will, should it be 30 gigs? Should it be 50 gigs? Well, it should be more than five gigs. I'll tell you that much. Uh, again, how much, as much as possible. I know this is tricky because not all of us have computers just dedicated to running tracks. I think best case scenario, I mean, this could be a bonus hit. Best case scenario, you should have a computer that's dedicated just to running tracks. 
but I realize that's not the reality for most of us. So if we're using this computer for work, if we're using this computer for video editing and we're using it for tracks, just do a really good job of managing space on your computer to make sure that, that uh, there's plenty of it left and that you're deleting files when you don't need them, storing files on an external hard drive, whatever you have to do. Next thing, collect all and save. This is essential in Ableton Live. We talked about this a lot, but if you go up to the file menu here and do collect all and save, that's gonna take all your samples that are referenced and used in different places on your computer, bring them into one place in your live folder, and maybe most importantly, take them off of an external hard drive, bring them onto your internal hard drive so that it's running off of that, so that if your external hard drive gets disconnected, your set doesn't you know, have any hiccups. And I've seen scenarios where a live set was kind of sluggish, was running into issues uh, because of the fact that samples were scattered all over the place. Live had to look for them, take a little more computing power to find them. So bring them all into one single place uh, in your live set. Now, the most important thing, the final piece here, I've been teasing this the whole time. Like I said, I just got done with these shows in Nashville. Uh, I had a glitch both on uh, Sunday and Monday during the show where my um, computer completely stopped playing audio for about two seconds. Major, major issue. Side note, if you're using an M1 Mac, check out my video, I'll link below on how to prevent that from happening. These are Intel Macs, so it was a different issue. Um, but not a single person noticed that happening during the show. And the reason why is I had a backup plan. I used this guy. This is the Play Audio 12 for my connectivity. It's a redundant interface. Again, are computers reliable enough to use on stage? No, and that's exactly why I use a redundant playback zone. Uh, so I connected computer A here, connected computer B here, and had this set up so that uh, I triggered using this guy right here, the Oakboard Slide Duo, link in the description, um, to trigger both of my Ableton Live sets, navigate my Ableton Live set, and you can have uh, your Play Audio 12 set up to do this automatically, but uh, I don't like trusting the robot, so I do it manually. And I had this foot switch set up. And so the instant that I looked at my A computer and I saw that something happened, I went boop and went over to the B computer and not a single person noticed. So this is a live TV taping, multiple artists, uh, a beautiful, beautiful venue at uh, uh, Belmont University, a uh, performance venue full of people and not a single person in the recording uh, aspect of that, live audio aspect of that, people in the venue band even noticed what happened because I had a backup plan. So is the computer reliable enough to use on stage? Well, no, but it's the best option we have. And we can make it more reliable by following the tips I showed you in this video. And most important of all is having a backup solution. So I put the link to the Play Audio 12 in the description of this video that you could purchase. Um, and again, if you are using tracks on stage, if you're performing on stage, uh, you wanna make sure you're doing it in the most efficient, flexible, stable way possible. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, enable the bell icon so you see all the tutorials that I post every single day when they go live so that you'll be at the top of your game. And again, you don't wanna be the person that gets laughed at on stage because everything falls apart. Because at some point that computer will crash and we gotta be ready. Thanks for watching, happy holidays. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.